Okay, so have you ever walked into one of those meetings, right? And like everyone's going on and on about integrations and connecting systems and you're sitting there like... Um, lost. Yeah, totally lost. Like, I don't even know where to begin. Like, what are they even talking about? It's like they're speaking a different language. Absolutely. Yeah, we've all been there. And today we're going to try to, like, give you at least a phrase book. Some sort of key. Yeah, a key. A Rosetta Stone, if you will, for yeah. this world of health IT. And especially when it comes to medical images and how those things actually move between different doctors, different hospitals. Right, because you go to one clinic for an x-ray. Yeah. And then you got to go to another hospital to see a specialist. How does that information get there? Exactly. And this whole thing uses something called health information exchanges or HIEs for short. So that's kind of like the the highway that this information travels on. That's a great analogy. Yeah. The highway system for healthcare data. And so today we're really going to focus on like the concrete steps, the framework that makes all of this possible. Exactly. And to make it even more real, we're going to be looking at a specific case study of CityCare Hospital okay, and their efforts to connect their electronic records with all these outside imaging centers. Makes sense. All through this regional HIE. So we're not just talking theory here. No, no. We're looking at real world examples. We're diving into the experiences of an actual health IT professional who's been through this whole process. Yeah. We're going to see like their project outlines the requirements they had to figure out even the testing scenarios they used to make sure everything worked right. All the nitty gritty details. So if you're in health IT and this whole world of image sharing is part of your world. Or even if you're just curious. Yeah. Even if you're just curious about how this stuff works. This is the deep dive for you. Stick with us. And for those of you who are really wanting to go deep, like really get into the nuts and bolts we've put together, a super detailed guide, yeah. you can find it in the comments in the description below. All the resources you need. All right. So let's kick things off by talking about like the core problem here. Like what is the pain point that usually triggers a project like this? You know, it usually starts with a real practical challenge that doctors are facing. Okay. So imagine you're Dr. Patel, a cardiologist at City Care Hospital. Right. He's facing these constant delays because he can't easily see the images that his patients had taken at other places. Oh, so like if someone had an x-ray at a different clinic, you can't yeah. just pull it up in their electronic record at City Care. It's not there. It's like a separate universe of information. Oh, I can see how that would be so frustrating. Right. Like you need that information to make a diagnosis. Absolutely. It's critical for patient care. And what kind of impact did this lack of access actually have like on patients and on the hospital? Well, the consequences were actually pretty serious. I mean, mm -hmm. delays in seeing those images could really slow down diagnosis. Yeah. That makes sense. Which could impact the quality of care. And I imagine it could lead to like more tests being ordered. Exactly. If they don't have the prior images, they might just order a new scan to be safe. Which is just more cost more radiation for the patient. It's a whole cascade of negative outcomes. So it's really a lose-lose situation. Yeah. And that's why CityCare knew they had to do something about it. So how did they start tackling this problem of these disconnected imaging systems? They got serious. Mm. And they tasked Alex one of their health IT business analysts okay. with finding a solution. Right. Alex's mission was to connect CityCare's system with all these external imaging centers. Big job. And they decided to use something called the IHE IT infrastructure framework. Okay, so that's IHE. Exactly. It's like a set of guidelines for how to exchange healthcare data in a standardized way. So before we get into like the super technical stuff, I think it's really helpful to understand like what was the process before they did this integration. Right. We need to see what the before picture looks yeah, like. What was Alex looking at when they first started trying to understand this problem? So Alex spent time with Dr. Patel and the radiology department mapping out the existing workflow for imaging. Okay, so every step from like ordering the image to getting the results back. Every single step. And I'm guessing it wasn't like a smooth digital experience. Oh, not at all. It was very manual and very paper-based. Okay, so walk me through it. Like what would happen when Dr. Patel needed to order a scan for a patient? So let's say Dr. Patel needed an x-ray for his patient. Okay. He would actually have to send that order to the external imaging center, often through fax, or even email. Facts in this day and age? Sometimes even email. Oh, wow. So already you're seeing delays and potential for errors. Yeah. Then the imaging center would do the scan and store those images in their own system. Okay. So the images are sitting in a completely separate system. Yeah. A siloed system. So how do they eventually get back to CityCare? Well, that's where it gets even more interesting. Okay. 
the reports and sometimes even the image files themselves would be physically delivered, like on CDs. Oh my gosh. Sometimes printed on paper or sent as attachments to emails. Wow. So someone at City Care then has to like manually take that information and upload it to the patient's record. Yeah, a very manual process. Yeah prone to errors and delays. Talk about a bottleneck. Huge bottleneck. And were there any other like major issues that they discovered in this old way of doing things? Yeah, another big one was patient identification. Oh, right, because different systems might use different ways of identifying patients. Exactly, so city care might have one ID for the patient, but the imaging center has a different one. And that creates a huge problem when you're trying to match up images with the right patient. Absolutely, it leads to mismatches, duplicate tests, all sorts of headaches. So to sum up, the main problems were lack of automated data sharing. Right. Inconsistent patient IDs. Yes. Too much manual work. Lots of manual work. And just a high risk of errors. Huge risk of error. Okay, so we've got a clear picture of the challenges they were facing. Now, let's talk about how they actually moved from this clunky manual system to something more streamlined and integrated. Right, so this is where those IHE profiles come in. Okay, so these are like the tools, the building blocks for making sure all these different systems can talk to each other. That's a great way to put it. They're like the common language that everyone agrees to speak. So which specific profiles did Alex choose to solve these problems at CityCare? Okay, so the first one they picked was XDSB. XDS.B. Exactly. And the main purpose of this one is to make sure that imaging reports and the actual image files themselves are stored securely in a central location. Like a shared drive in the cloud or something. Kind of. It's called a regional repository. Okay. And this allows any authorized healthcare provider to access them no matter where they are. So that's a big step forward in terms of accessibility. Absolutely. It breaks down those information silos. Okay. What else? What other profiles were important? Another crucial one was PIX. Yep. And this tackles the problem of patient identification we talked about. Right. Like making sure everyone's talking about the same patient. Exactly. PIX helps to link a patient's record in one system to their record in another system, even if they have different IDs. Oh, so it's like a detective that figures out who's who. That's a good analogy. And what about just getting basic information about a patient, like their name, their date of birth? That's where PDQ comes in. PDQ. It allows the electronic health record to basically ask the imaging center, yeah, hey, who is this patient? And get those details back in real time. So that helps to prevent those mismatches from happening in the first place. Exactly. It's like double checking at the door. Makes sense. Now, what about situations where you're dealing with like referrals to specialists who might be part of a whole different network or using a different HIE? That's a great question. And that's where XCA becomes really important. XCA. It allows for the retrieval of those imaging documents even across different HIEs or repositories. So it's like expanding the reach of the network. Yeah, it makes it possible to follow the patient's data wherever they go. Okay, so we've got ways to share documents, match patients, and get their basic info. Now let's talk about the very first step in the process, actually ordering the imaging study itself. Right, and that's where SWF comes in. This profile basically automates the entire radiology workflow, starting with sending those orders electronically using HL7 messages. Oh, yeah. HL7, those are like the standard electronic envelopes for healthcare information. Exactly. And this gets rid of all those faxes and emails we talked about. So no more paper flying around? Much more efficient and reliable. Okay, so we've got this whole set of communication methods to address the challenges they were facing, but how do you go from like a blueprint to a real working system? That's where the business requirements document comes in. The BRD. The BRD. And this is basically the project plan, right? Exactly. It lays out everything the system needs to do from a business perspective. Okay, so Alex working with the radiologists, the IT folks, the administrators, they created this document to make sure the new system actually met their needs and followed all the best practices. It's all about aligning everyone on the same page. So what were some of the main goals that Alex defined in the BRD? Like, what were they hoping to achieve with this whole integrated system? The big ones were pretty clear. Oh, yeah. Real-time sharing of imaging data. Okay. Cutting down on all that manual work. Right. And ultimately improving patient safety by making sure the right images are linked to the right patient. Sounds like a good plan. It was a solid plan. So what specific capabilities did they need to build into the system to achieve these goals? Okay, so the BRD laid out a bunch of functional requirements. Yeah, okay, like features of the system. Yeah, so features and capabilities. So, for example, they needed CityCare's EHR to be able to connect to that XDSB repository. Right, so it could both send and receive images? Exactly. They also needed to use PDQ to query patient demographics. 
to make sure they had the right patient. Right. And they had to set up the system to send those imaging orders electronically using HL7 messages. So no more faxes. No more faxes. And the imaging center had to be able to send the actual images back in a way that could be linked to the patient's record in CityCare system. Okay, so it all has to connect seamlessly. Seamlessly. And then they also had to make sure that their MPI, which is their system for managing patient IDs, okay. was using PIX to make sure patient information was matched correctly across different systems. So a lot of moving pieces. A lot of moving pieces, but they all had to work together. Now, beyond just the features, were there also requirements about like how well the system needed to perform or how secure it had to be? Absolutely. They had a whole set of non-functional requirements. Okay. So security and privacy were huge priorities, obviously. Uh, of course. So the system had to comply with IPI GDPR. All the big regulations. All the big ones. And they also had to follow IHE's guidelines for secure audit logging, which is called ATNA. Okay. So making sure there's a record yeah. of who accessed what. Yeah. Exactly. For accountability. And then performance was another big one. Right, because no one wants to wait forever for images to load. Exactly. They set a target of three to five seconds for retrieving images. Okay, so pretty snappy. Yeah, and finally, the system had to be scalable. Scalable. Meaning you had to be able to handle connections with multiple imaging centers and any future integrations with the HIE. So they were thinking ahead. Always thinking ahead. Okay, so now we've got the BRD, the plan in place. What were the next steps in actually building this integrated system? So... With the BRD finalized, they moved on to the implementation phase. Okay. Which meant working with different technology vendors to build and configure the solution. So this is where the IT folks really got their hands dirty. Absolutely. And throughout this process, they were very careful to follow those IIS methods we talked about. Right. To make sure everything would work together smoothly. Exactly. They had to speak the same language. Can you give us like a simplified overview of how the data actually moved through this new system using those IIG methods? Sure. So it all started with the hospital sending an electronic order to the imaging center. Using HL7. Using HL7, yep. And once the scan was done, the imaging center would store the images and the reports in that shared XDSB repository. Okay, so that central storage location. Right. And then the hospital system would send a PIX query to make sure they had the right patient ID. Double checking. Always double checking. And then to actually get the images, the hospital would query the repository using XCA. Okay. And finally, those reports and images would be linked to the patient's record in the EHR. So it's all automated and connected. Much smoother than faxes and CDs. Night and day, but just because you build it doesn't mean it works perfectly. Right. So what role did testing play in all of this? Testing was absolutely crucial. Yeah, you got to make sure everything's talking to each other correctly. Exactly. They had to make sure all the pieces fit together, and they developed very specific test scenarios. Okay, so like simulations of different situations. Right, to see how the system would handle them. Can you give us an example of one of those test scenarios? Sure. So one really important one focused on patient identification. Okay. Making sure the right images go to the right patient. Exactly. They wanted to be absolutely certain that the system could query and receive the correct patient IDs, even if there were differences across different systems. So like if the patient had one ID at CityCare and a different one at the imaging center? That's right. They had to make sure the system could connect the dots. Because that's like the foundation of everything else. Absolutely. You can't have accurate information if you don't have the right patient. What about testing the actual sharing of the documents themselves, like the images and the reports? Yeah, so they had another test scenario that focused on making sure those imaging documents could be stored in the XDSB repository and then accessed by the hospital's EHR. Okay, so basically simulating the whole send and receive process. Exactly, and they would check that the documents were complete, that they were sent securely, all of that. So testing both the patient ID piece and the document sharing piece, were there any other key areas they focused on? Yeah. They also had tests for making sure they could retrieve basic patient information before they even tried to get the images. Okay. So another layer of protection against mismatches. Right. And they even tested some newer ways of accessing imaging data using FHIR. Which is another standard for exchanging healthcare information. Exactly. So they were really covering all their bases. Seems like they were really thorough. They were thorough. So after all that planning and building and testing, what were the actual outcomes? Did Dr. Patel and the team at CityCare see the results they were hoping for? Yes, they did. Tell me everything. Within a few months of going live with the new system, Dr. Patel and the other clinicians started seeing some really big changes in their daily work. Oh, okay. Like what? Well, for one, Dr. Patel didn't have to spend hours on the phone with other clinics trying to track down old images anymore. Oh, that's a huge time saver. Huge time saver. 
and patients didn't have to carry around those CDs anymore. Because all the images were right there in the EHR. Exactly at their fingertips. So that's a win for everyone. Definitely. And perhaps most importantly, they saw a big improvement in patient matching accuracy. Which means fewer duplicate tests. Exactly. They actually saw a 30% reduction in duplicate imaging tests. Wow, 30%. That's a huge win. It is. It means less cost for the hospital, less radiation for the patients, and it also means clinicians had a more complete picture of the patient's history. Right, so they could make better decisions. Absolutely more informed decisions. What other positive outcomes did they observe? Well, all of those improvements ultimately led to faster diagnoses and treatment decisions. Because they had the information they needed right away. Right at their fingertips, which means better outcomes for patients. So it sounds like this project really did deliver on its promise of seamless imaging integration. It did. So what's the big takeaway here for other health IT folks who might be facing similar challenges? The key message is that achieving this kind of integration through HIEs and using those established standards, like, like IHE, has huge benefits for everyone involved, both for healthcare professionals and for patients. It really is all about making sure that different systems can talk to each other. Absolutely. They're the foundation of good healthcare these days. And on that note, here's a final thought for you to chew on. Okay. If seamless imaging integration can have such a big impact, what are the possibilities for applying these same principles to other types of health data? That's a great question. Like what other information silos could we be breaking down to improve patient care and just make everything run more smoothly? It's a challenge, but it's also a huge opportunity. Lots to think about. Definitely. Thanks for diving into this with us. My pleasure.